Hello and welcome sweet friends to my channel crafting with me in Danny Jones and today we have something very special It's crafting with thrift finds or whatever you find in your home on the street wherever it is It's called the thrift flip road trip challenge and it is hosted by my sweet friends Trish and Kay the crafting cousins and of course Sammy of unicorn dust designs So let's see what I found and what I came up with. Let's go this was an interesting find simply because I found it in a friend's garage. She had it there and she wanted to do something with it and decided to give it to me. And I was very happy to have it. Now, I wasn't very happy with this paint job. It's this beige with a pink background. It really did not look very well at all. So I decided to paint it bronze. I thought it would be nice just to have it back to like the original. It's, it's a bronze uh, painted piece but i couldn't remove the paint and i couldn't remove luna and kuru from being in the way i am so sorry the little heads are in the way but all i'm doing here is painting as you can see there in the background trying to get into all the nooks and crannies and everything again this is a very large lamp and very heavy lamp as well you'll see now when we get to the top of the lamp the shade of the lamp there are these beautiful thick stained glass panels I don't know if they're stained glass. It's not that they're stained, it's just their glass panels. Look at them with that pink. And I just felt that that beige really was bringing out the pink. So I'm hoping it's not overkill with the bronze. I do tone down the color a little bit afterwards by adding some antique wax just to deepen the color of the bronze. So I hope you can see that this is really turning out to be much lovelier with this paint job. So I hope to have this in my shabby chic room. Now this box I found in my stash and little Guru, well, she wanted to be part of the camera action. So she's going to be helping me out in this next segment. And look at this. This was amongst the shabby papers that I had in my stash and how perfect. Let's make a clock. So that's what we're going to do. By the way, I want to thank everyone for their kind words and well wishes to my little ones here, Guru and Luna, as they celebrated their first birthday and one year living with me. I hope that you guys have enjoyed them. I never had my cats as part of my crafting before, but you know, they want to be part of the show. So there they are. How I acquired this box? Well, I found it at work. They were going to get rid of it. It was part of a gift that someone had received. And of course, I asked them for the box because we know what it's like when you find a good box like this, you can't give it up. And initially I thought I was going to make it into like a junk drawer, like, you know, make it like a, you know, mixed media kind of thing. But then I saw that watch or that clock face and I had to use it. So here I am using this little box that I believe I got from the Dollar Tree and it was filled with little um, wood cutouts, I believe, from one of the holidays. I think it was Christmas. So I thought this would be perfect for the face of my clock. As you can see, I am just removing all of that inner part because I do need to access the very center of the clock so I can add to the clock face the, uh, the arms and clock arms or are they called our yeah i guess they're clock arms or whatever hey kudu a little kudu by the way thank you all for your wonderful well wishes as we celebrated a year of life with my cute little crafting kittens can't believe it's been a year already okay now i'm going to add look at this clock oh my gosh is this shabby chic ladies and gentlemen if there's gentlemen out there there's gentlemen out there that might like shabby chic but my goodness, how could I pass up a face like that? I mean, really, how can I pass up a clock face like that? So here, all I'm doing is I'm using Mod Podge, but I am using the ironing method for this particular item, simply because I wanted to make sure there was absolutely not a single wrinkle at all. So what I did is I brushed the Mod Podge onto the item, let it dry just for a few minutes or so, and when it stops being tacky, which well most of my my you know i don't know are any of my you know crafts tacky you let me know and i'll stop being tacky anyway when the mod podge stops being tacky then we're going to use a very very low heat iron if you have a regular iron and you want to use this i would suggest putting a piece of parchment paper 
so that you don't burn your project. Because I'm using this very low heat little mini iron from HTV Rant, I decided to just go ahead and use it directly on the paper. Now I had salvaged this clock uh, mechanism and that is what I'm going to use. It's absolutely perfect. I really can't tell if it's working or not because it doesn't have a second hand. So I do notice that the hands move, but mm, I don't know if it's on time. I don't know. I'd have to find out. Anyway, I use those pieces of wood back to serve as a support for the uh, clock mechanism simply because that way I could come in and change the battery when necessary. And here I'm just adding the clock hands. Clock hands, right? Yes, clock hands. I'm just adding them and look at how beautiful. I even love the design of the clock hands themselves. I think it's very elegant and very shabby chic. So there you go. There is the basic process of putting together a clock. Now, you can buy the mechanism for a clock at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. Just follow the instructions and make sure you use every single piece that comes with your kit. So now I'm going to place that in the box and what I'm going to do is actually support it in the back so that I don't have to glue it in the box. So if I have to change the battery, it's very easy to access it. And all I did was nail um, two small nails on either side just to hold up that clock piece. If you can notice also in the box, I had decoupaged some decorative paper to serve as a backdrop as we're going to add some silk flowers to really bring this little clock to life. And I'm telling you, I love, love, love this. Again, another piece that I can add to my shabby chic uh, bedroom. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of shabby chic going on in my bedroom. And it's mostly shabby. I hate to say it. Are you like me? Do you leave a lot of your nice dried clothes in their baskets until you need it or until the weekend comes? I love to do laundry while I'm home at night, but I hate to fold it and put it away. So I, I save it all for just one day and knock it all out in an hour. But enough about me droning on and on and on. <laughs> Here, what I'm doing is using these beautiful, beautiful Timu florals. And as you can see, they match perfectly with the design. So this is what I am doing. I don't know if you ever thought of doing this, of putting a clock with flowers in it. I think it's beautiful. What do you think? Next, I have these beautiful metal sconces that I got at a garage sale. I think I bought them both two for five dollars and they were basically clean. I'm just like cleaning it up. I always like to clean up any kind of products that I am going to put into my house because I don't know where they've been, if they've been sitting in a garage or what have you. So here I'm going to use this beautiful decoupage paper from Tim Holtz and I'm going to use these beautiful floral designs. I think this is absolutely perfect. I could have left them plain, but they look too plain. And I thought, you know, I was thinking of, should I use a, a you know, a mold and put that in there. I really was getting lost as to what to do. But and then I saw these flowers. I remembered I had these decoupage floral patterns and these this decoupage paper, which is absolutely perfect for decoupaging. And I thought this would make a beautiful addition to these scones. It actually makes them look as though they are hand painted because I'm putting the gloss over the the tissue itself and of course it makes it look like it's painted and i just think it's absolutely lovely it's kind of sad that they might be covered by a candle once i put a candle there i'll put one of those um, battery powered candles that have a remote so it's easy to control the candle i would never use any kind of like real candle on a sconce because i you just don't know what's gonna happen now i think i called them a scone before and i apologize i think they're sconces that's the proper name but let me know if these have another name. Uh, again, all I'm doing here is trimming it up and we are pretty much ready to go. I really enjoyed making all of these thrift flips today and really enjoying the shabby chic look at, of it all. And I hope you like it too. Here's another thrift flip, but if you want to see what I've come up with for this project, you have to stay tuned for my next video. I come up with something very creative to use this pillowcase. So come back for some more shabby chic goodness for Christmas this time. 
Thank you once again to the hostesses of the Thrift Flip Road, Trish, Kay and Trish and Sammy. Kay and Trish are the crafting cousins and of course, Sammy of Unicorn Dust Designs. Check out their channels and check out the full playlist of wonderful thrift flipping ideas. You'll flip your lid when you see these wonderful ideas. Was that corny? Sure, but I'm still gonna keep it in the video, why not? Anyway, thank you once again for stopping by and spending some time with me. And I hope I've inspired you and gotten you ready to go find some thrifting items of your own. And as I always say, stay safe, be kind. God bless each and every one of you. And remember to live the adventure. Now go and make something beautiful today. See you again soon.